Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, really, really, really do appreciate um, all of your prayers. And um, yeah, what, what a blessing. Um, you know, I arrived today w with a word to share with you, and um, I feel like I've just been blessed so, so, so much. So thank you for that. Um, really, really lovely to be here with you all this morning. Um, hope everybody is doing well. Um, well done for making it to church. I'm very aware that um, maybe some of us, certainly myself, had a slightly later night than usual last night. So well done for making it to church. And Happy New Year. How is it 2023 already? I feel like I've only just sort of got used to saying 2022 and now we're already in 2023. But maybe that's just me. Um, so yes, for those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Olivia um, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kids Club Kampala. Kids Club Kampala is a children's charity working with vulnerable families and young people in Kampala, which is the capital of Uganda in East Africa. And we work in slum communities, and these communities that we work in are some of the poorest communities in the world. And the conditions that people live in there are very, very difficult. And what Kids Club Kampala does is we both share the gospel with children and young people. We tell them about the love of Jesus and the hope and good news that he is. But we also practically meet people's needs. We also practically are being Jesus' hands and feet and trying to love people and practically support and help them to get out of poverty through educating, feeding, protecting and skilling. And um, if anyone would like to know more about what we do or how you can get involved or how your support is making a difference, please do feel free to ask me anything. Um, I'll be hanging around after the service or just get in touch um, at any time. And we're really blessed um, to be your charity of the year and we really appreciate your partnership so thank you for that um, and also just thank you for your support um, and your prayers for myself and my family personally as well um, so yeah as ian said we live in erdington um, and my husband hugh is here today if you haven't met him yet um, I think he's pretty cool, so go and say hi. Um, and yeah, he's training for ministry in the Church of England, um, and we were at a, we were at um, a church in Erdington doing that at the moment. And we've got two little ones, a four-year-old and a one-year-old, who are with their grandparents this morning. Um, so <laughs> we're having a little bit of a break. Um, but if you haven't met them, I'm sure we will be back at some point with them as well. So yes, thank you um, for all of your support. It's a real blessing to be here with you this morning. Um, so thank you for, for having me back again. And as I've already said, Happy New Year. 1st of January, 2023. Has anyone made any New Year's resolutions yet? Any, anyone? <laughs> don't worry, I won't ask you to share them with me. Um, I don't know about you, but I always find New Year's resolutions a bit of a, a bit of a strange feeling can be a bit stressful at times and for me I often set out with very good intentions and I make some New Year's resolutions but I'm not always fantastic at sticking to them and over the years I've made various New Year's resolutions and I have stuck to them with varying degrees of success. Previous New Year's resolutions that I've set for myself or goals that I have set for myself at the beginning of the year have varied wildly from running every day to eating more healthily, reading my Bible every day, doing 10,000 steps a day, um, cutting down on social media, taking my makeup off every night. That was one of my news resolutions for 2022 and probably no surprise is that I did not stick to that very successfully at all. And I don't know why, but for me, I don't think I've ever successfully like completed a New Year's resolution. For me, I set these goals um, and to, you know to achieve something, to spend half an hour of uh, time every day reading my Bible, or to I don't know exercise a certain amount of time every day. And then if I don't make it, 
or if I forget or if I mess up, I just simply chuck out the whole resolution. I think, right, messed up there, let's, let's park that and I'll just come back to that next year. I don't bother trying again. Once the resolution has been broken, that's it for me. Can anyone relate? Or is, is that just me? And also I think the new year can sometimes bring mixed feelings. It can be exciting and, and a fresh start and a new year, but also sometimes it can bring mixed feelings. After all the excitement of Christmas and New Year's Eve, we then hit January. And January is a long month. It's a dark month. It's often a very cold month. And sometimes there's not very much to look forward to in January for, for quite a while. And then on top of that, we have this pressure for self-improvement, this pressure to set goals or resolutions or to achieve certain things. New year, new you. Who's, who's heard that recently? New year, new start, fresh start in the new year. The other day on social media, I saw um, something um, that said, new year, younger looking you. And I thought, oh, thanks, thanks Facebook algorithm for, for targeting that at me. What pressure? For some people, it is exciting. It can be motivating, setting goals. It can be encouraging doing that. But I think for a lot of us, um, certainly for myself at times, it can feel a bit overwhelming and a bit stressful. I've just about survived. I've just about got through 2022. I've just hung on by the skin of my teeth. And now I've got to start again. And this year, I've not only got to start again, but I've got to do even better. I've got to achieve more. This year is going to be my year. This year, I'm going to be healthier. This year, I'm going to be wealthier. This year, I'm going to be more successful. I'm going to look younger. I'm going to be happier. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger, fitter, godlier, whatever it is. Whew. Why do we feel like this? Where does this narrative come from? Where do we feel this pressure to do more, to be better? Why do we feel this constant need for growth? And when I'm talking about growth, I'm not talking about spiritual growth. I'm talking about this pressure to be better and to accumulate more. Well, what are we listening to? What are the voices having the biggest influence on our lives? Is it our friends? Is it our family? Is it social media, TV, newspapers, magazines? None of these things are bad in and of themselves. But what is the voice in our life that is shouting the loudest? What is the voice that we are listening to the most? What are those voices in our lives that we are giving the most airtime to? What are the voices that we allow the most influence into and over our lives? Is it the world around us? Is it our friends? Is it social media? Is it what we see in the media or the news? Or is it that still, small voice? Is it the voice of the Lord? And how do we hear God's voice? How do we discern what is God and what is the world? How do we discern God's plans for our lives or for the new year? How do we know what God wants for us? How do we know what God wants for our lives? Well, I think a good starting point is always, always is turning to the Bible. The Bible is full of wisdom and advice and instruction from the Lord about how we should live our lives and, and what we should do and how to love him and how to love other people. In Micah chapter 6 verse 8, so right near the end of the Old Testament, in Micah chapter 6 it says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The Lord requires nothing more of us than this. 
He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The Lord doesn't require us. It doesn't say here that he requires us to have a long list of self-improvements, to have a long list of to-dos to achieve. He doesn't require us to have a vision board. He doesn't require us to have a word for the year or to have New Year's resolutions. We are not required to try to impress him with what we are achieving or with what spiritual practices we do or don't take up. He doesn't require us to strive in our own strength to be a good person, to accomplish lots of important things, to make God love us. He has shown us what is good, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And there is nothing that we can do to make God love us any more or any less. And we can't do it on our own. He knows we can't do anything on our own. We can't do anything without him. He created us. He knows us. He knows that we need him to sustain ourselves. We haven't been created to strive. God didn't design us to do things in our own strength. He designed us to partner with him. His grace is sufficient for us. His power is made perfect in our weakness. When we are weak, he is strong. And when we are weak, his power is able to be demonstrated through us. Following Jesus shouldn't feel like a slog. It shouldn't feel like a burden. Spending time with God isn't a daily task to be ticked off our to-do list. It isn't a resolution to be fulfilled or a goal to be accomplished. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, I'm sure you will know these verses, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Following Jesus is a joy. Following Jesus is a free gift for all of us. Following Jesus is a blessing beyond blessing. It is not a burden. Jesus says his yoke is easy and it is the best thing that you will ever do. Guaranteed. Now, that's not to say there's anything wrong with spiritual disciplines. Please, please don't mishear me on this. That's not what I'm saying. Spending time reading God's word, spending time in his presence, coming to church, spending time in worship, praying to him, praying with and for other people, listening to God. These things are so, so important. And I'm in course... I am, of course, encouraging you to do these things, so please don't mishear me on that. But what I'm saying is that discipline for discipline's sake is not the goal. We are not doing these things to make God love us more. We are not doing these things to impress God or to appease God. We're doing these things because he loves us. We love because he first loved us. It's about relationship. It is about heart position. I don't choose to spend time with my husband or with my kids because I think it's something important to do or because it's something that I've got on my New Year's resolution list to do more of or even because it's something I know that's good for me. I do it because we have a relationship We love each other. We want to spend time together, hanging out, getting to know each other more. And that's how it is should be with Jesus. Not something to feel burdened or bogged down by, but something that is a joy and a blessing and a huge benefit to our lives. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 34, the Pharisees get together and they decide to try to trap um, or to trick Jesus. They try to test Jesus with a question to see if they can trip him up to catch him out. 
And one of them, who's an expert in the law, asked Jesus this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And I don't know what answer the Pharisees were expecting here. But Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. It doesn't say in Matthew what the Pharisee replies to this. I assume he just walks away because he doesn't have anything to say. He wasn't able to test or trip up Jesus. And what Jesus is saying here is that, of course, the most important thing, the most important commandment is to love God. And not to just love him a little bit or to just portion him off into, you know, a nice little box. But it is to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul and all of our minds, making him a central part of all of our lives. But what Jesus is also saying is that to love God means that you also love God's people. The second commandment is almost as important as the first commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. What Jesus is saying is that when we love God's people, we are always at the same time loving God. Loving other people is an act of worship. It is a way that we show love to God. And again, this is not something that is always easy to do. Loving other people is hard. Loving some people is difficult. And again, this is not something we can do in our own strength. But we know and we have the encouragement that that in Christ we can do anything. This we can do. We can love God with all of ourselves. We can love our neighbor, love other people, even when it feels hard even when we don't feel like it. And the word in the New Testament for love here is the word agape, the Greek word agape. And the kind of love that it is describing here when Jesus says this, love God, love other people, it's not emotional love. It's not romantic love. It doesn't depend on our feelings or our thoughts, how we're feeling that day. It describes the sacrificial, unconditional love of God, the kind of love that meant Jesus came to earth, lived as a human, and then died for us, that sort of love. And that is the love that we receive freely, daily from the Lord, and that is the love that sustains us and enables us to then love him and love other people. So what if this year, 2023, what if instead of starting out the year focusing on how to be the best version of yourself, rather than focusing on self-improvement or New Year's resolutions or your own personal goals or vision for the year, what if this year we focused on what Jesus tells us to do in Matthew 22? What if we focused on radically, wholeheartedly, unashamedly loving God and loving our neighbor with all of ourselves? What would it look like to put God first and to put our neighbor first when making all and any decisions, when we are deciding how to spend our time, how to spend our money, how to spend our energy, what to do with everything that we have? What would our lives look like? What would our church look like? What would our community, our world around us look like if we practiced radical generosity, radical hospitality? If we focus not on what we can gain, but what we can give. If we viewed the world around us and everything in it as a precious gift from God for us to look after, to steward. What if we did our best to look after and be good stewards of everything that he's given us? 
all the blessings that he has stowed upon us, caring for our world and taking care of the needs of those around us. If together we did our best to care for the poor, feed the hungry, stand up for the oppressed, what would our church, what would our community, what would our world look like? I saw this prayer the other day and I thought it was very apt and I would just like to close with this. May your... Oh, sorry. (laughs) So I saw this prayer and I just thought it was really apt. So I'd just like to pray this over us now as I close. May your 2023 be a year of more rhythms, less resolutions. More living, less scrolling. More social, less media. More celebrations and less comparisons. More prayer, less worrying more rejoicing, less ruminating, more people, less things, more presence, less hustle, more love, more joy, more peace. Amen. Thank you, Olivia. That was really, really 